In this tutorial we're going to look at the Kasambi app basics. We'll look at the Kasambi app settings, we'll create and configure a new lighting network, we'll add two luminaires, we'll create some very basic scenes and then we'll finish by creating an animation. So I now have the app open on the more page. The app settings are two from the bottom. Within these settings you can change the theme if needed. You can change the language of your device although it will take the default language of your device in most cases. You can select, select to prefer a previous network. This means that when you first open your app if you are within range of one of your known networks it will automatically connect to it. Notify on paired devices allows, will allow the app to notify you about devices which are not yet paired in a network. Personally I turn it off because it can be a bit annoying that it flashes all, up all of the time. Bluetooth luminaires enabled. Without that you're not going to get very far. There's also the option to use a Philips Hue, show the help buttons and also site features. Site features are something we'll look at at a later time. I've now selected the option to create a new network. I'll first enter a name. Then select your time zone, which in most cases will happen automatically. You need to set your location if you want to use sunret, sunset and sunrise times, but for this tutorial and privacy I won't set that right now. The sharing option allows you to share out your network so that other devices can use your luminaires and control your luminaires. If you do not share out your network, the only device which will be able to control your luminaires is the device that you used to install the network. There are various options to share out your network. Administrator only means that you must set an email address and password <coughs> and only that account will then be able to access the network. Password protected you give a password for a visitor access and also for administrative access. An open network means anybody can control your luminaires, but they cannot make uh, configuration changes unless they have the administrative password to that network. Radio settings, there are two different modes. The default is balanced, and in most cases is perfectly fine and should be used. The other option is better for performance, it may sound like the better performance option is the one to go for, but in fact it can be actually detrimental if it's used incorrectly. The better performance option is designed for networks which control, which contain a very large amount of, of luminaires within it. For example, a hundred, and they're all they're designed to be in the same place. The difference between the two networks is balanced is a slower network, but has a greater range. Better performance is faster but you sacrifice speed for signal strength. That's why better performance is only supposed to be used with a lot of luminaires all in the same room. You can change the frequencies that your network will use separately. So for example, if you know you have a Wi-Fi network which is using 2477 MHz, you can move away from that frequency if you like. In most cases, the default frequencies which the app gives will be sufficient. When you're finished, simply press done. We are now on the luminaires page. If I select show nearby devices, I can now add two devices. And as you'll see, although the exposure in the video is not very good, I have uh, an RGB luminaire connected to a CBU PWM4 and I also have a standard dimmable E27 bulb connected to a CBU TED. So I'll go ahead and add both of those devices to my network. Simply select the network and choose Add to Kasambi. You see that it no longer says that the device is unpaired and is now instead 
at CASMB, the name of the network. Likewise, I've now paired both Luminez. If we now go back to the Luminez page, you can see that both Luminez are now part of my network. I can now turn them off and to try and keep exposure down. Okay, I'll keep that at a very low value. And I'll also turn down my RGB light. And just as an example, I'll also change the color. So now we'll make some basic scenes. Let's go to the Scenes tab. As we're going to make an animation, I'm going to make three different colors with my PW, uh, RGB luminaire. So let's call this first one green. And then add a scene. Nothing has yet been selected, so I'll select my luminaire. Because the light was already on, the dimming level has also been set. And I'm quite happy with that, lim that dimming level for this example. And it's also green, so I'm going to keep that. As you can see, I've accidentally made a spelling mistake in the word green. So I go to in the bottom right-hand corner to, for the settings, and I'll change, correct my uh, mistake. I can also change the color of the actual icon and change the icon itself if I want to. And I can also hide the scene as well. But I won't for this case. And then press done. And done again. If I'd selected hidden, this green scene would no longer appear in this page. But if I selected edit, then it would appear. When we've finished the animation, we'll go and hide the coloured scenes so you see what I mean. I'll now make a red scene. Again, select the RGB, but this time hold it down to choose red. And done. Again, let's now choose blue. And done again. And one last scene. Let's call it white for the white light. Again, I'm going to keep the dimming levels down so that the camera exposes OK. We now have four scenes which we can turn on and off. My white scene is already on. Now I can turn it off. An example of this is the scene is only at around about 25%. If I now go back to the Luminaires tab, turn my TED on full, go back to the scenes and select the scene, you'll see that the dimming level goes down to around about 20%. For now I'll turn that scene off. I'll now ch change my RGB light so it's green, red, and blue. Because these top three scenes are controlling the same luminaire, you'll see that when I change scene, the previous scene turns itself off. If I just turn on the white scene, the RGB light will all still remain on until I actually turn it off. So now that we have three uh, coloured scenes set, let's make an animation. Choose animation from the list. We'll add a scene. And for the sake of speed, we'll add them all straight away. However, what I would like this scene to do is I would like it to start with by turning on the white light. So I'll hold down this line on the right and move it up to the top. 
I can choose the dimming level of the scene. This is not the percentage of the luminaire, it is the percentage of the scene. So bearing in mind my scene is set to 25%, this means it will use 100% of that 25. So I'm going to leave it set at 100%. The number next to it is the fade in time, meaning the time that it takes to go from 0 to 100%. I'm going to change this to 4 seconds just for a demonstration. And I'll change all others to, to 4 seconds. So right now my animation will start with white light. It will then turn on the green light 4 seconds later. It will then turn on the red light and the blue light. During this time, the white light will always stay on. So instead, I would like the white light to first turn on, turn off, and then change the colored luminaire. So I'm going to add the white light one more time, move it up, but this time I want to turn it off. And I'm going to take one second to turn it off. At the end of the RGB I'd like to turn that off again. Again I'll take one second to turn it off. And then I'm going to flash my white light on and off. And then I'm going to repeat the whole animation. So again, to recap, the white light will take four seconds to come on, then one second to turn off. Then my RGB light will go green, red, blue, then turn itself off, then the white light will come on for a second and turn itself back on, off. The, the, whole process, the whole animation will then repeat itself. So let's test that. So as you can see, it's re repeating the process. The only thing that wasn't quite clear is the gap between, because I turned the white light off at the very end and it came back on with the white light, it was a little unclear. But other than that, it worked okay. I'll now remove the repeat option so you can see the difference. Once the animation is now completed, all the lights should turn off. So the animation has now ended and as you can see in the app it's also dimmed itself. Let's make one slight change to the animation. I'll remove the white light I'll change the fade in time to one second. But now I will add wait times of four seconds between the changes of color.
Now the animation has ended and the light has turned itself off. Getting back to the hidden scenes idea, you can see that my red, blue and white and green scenes are all now visible. I don't intend to manually control my luminaire to be green, red or blue. I only want to use them within my animation, therefore I don't need to see them. So I'm going to edit each colour and hide it. When I now press done, you'll notice that green, red and blue all disappear. My animation can still work because the the colour scenes have not been deleted. They're just hidden from view because I don't need to see them every day. If I ever need to edit them, if I select edit, they reappear. And I can go back into them and edit anything that I need to and to do.